Hello and welcome to Sit Down with the Chief. We're here with Richard Steyer, who's going to talk about Jonah Rectitz, a donor to the mayor's 2013 campaign, who is now spilling his guts at the federal courthouse. Uh, the question was raised about who's on trial here, Norman Seabrook or Bill de Blasio. Richard? Basically, any time that uh, prosecutors are putting forward a case, they're looking to get the bad news about their primary witness out of the way during their examination of him, rather than leaving it to the defense to uh, give jurors an aha moment where it seems as if they're revealing something that the prosecutors were looking to keep from the juror's attention. And so that they've been running through the various crimes of Jonah Rectitz, and a big part of uh, what he started out talking about uh, were the payoffs that he was making first to high-ranking police officials, going back to when Michael Bloomberg was still mayor, and then payoffs that he was making to uh, the mayor, primarily through his chief fundraiser, Ross Offinger, but in some cases with uh, calls and personal visits from the mayor, who he said gave him his cell phone number, gave him his private email address, and uh, talked about it being the start of a beautiful friendship. Uh, something the mayor has greatly come to regret. And so that uh, a good part of the focus, certainly by the media, uh, but also even in terms of the trial, has been on not the $60,000 that he was supposed to deliver to Seabrook on behalf of a hedge fund operator uh, who uh, Seabrook had given uh, $20 million worth of union investments, but on uh, the stuff that he did with the mayor that did not wind up an indictment for the mayor, but got some fairly caustic remarks made by both the Manhattan District Attorney and the U.S. Attorney's Office at the time back in March that they said that they weren't going to be bringing criminal charges. And so that uh, de Blasio has been in a situation where uh, with just about a week to go before uh, his re-election and what was supposed to be a coast to victory, uh, he's suddenly having to answer questions and talk about how little he really knew Ragnitz and that this guy is a thorough liar and you can't believe him. But the initial response from his press secretary was that this is reheated and repackaged stuff that didn't result in any action being taken. At no point in that initial response did he say that Ragnitz was lying. And so that uh, it's something where the defense, uh, Norman's lawyer as well as the lawyer for Murray Huberfeld, the hedge fund operator, have uh, told jurors right from the start that they were going to uh, destroy the case against their clients by basically attacking the credibility of Recknitz. Uh, but uh, one of the things that uh, the prosecutors are looking to do is uh, they're making a case that Recknitz was doing this with people other than Seabrook. Uh, that there is no reason to disbelieve him based on uh, the fact that uh, you can see that there were ways in which he was given access uh, by both ranking police officials and by the mayor. And they have also been able to supplement the testimony that Recknitz is giving uh, with the testimony of Elias Husamedin, who is the head of the Correction Officers Union, was a close associate of Seabrook's. Uh, they go back uh, for the entire 21 years that Norman was running the union. And basically he's saying that uh, there were a lot of things that Norman was doing in terms of Recknitz, in terms of Uberfeld, that he didn't know anything about and that he didn't get some key memos. So it becomes something where with Recknitz you can say this guy was a hustler, this uh, spoiled kid from Beverly Hills who uh, grew up with all sorts of privilege and tried to maintain it on his own by spreading a lot of money around. It's a little bit tougher to attack the credibility of Husa Medin, uh, who is a guy who basically came up the old-fashioned way, he worked his way up through the system, became a correction officer, then became a uh, correction officer official. And so that that's the thing that they have to worry about, that you can doubt Recknitz all you want, but you've also got uh, a, another witness who's a little bit harder to knock down as unreliable, who is essentially corroborating part of the tale that the prosecutors are spinning for the jury, and I don't mean spinning in a pejorative way, that they're basically laying out a case with all the elements, and he may be as key an element as Recknitz uh, when it comes down to it. Thank you, Richard Steiner. And thank you for watching Sit Down with the Chief.